हमारे वक्त की धड़कन हमारा चिंतन हमारी भावनाएं हमारे विचार कभी कोमल बातचीत तो कभी इंटरेक्शन तेज तर्रार तय करें मिलकर वॉट इज रॉन्ग वॉट इज राइट आई टीवी पर अशोक व्यास के साथ इन साइट टू नाइट नमस्कार मैं अशोक व्यास कार्यक्रम इन साइट टू नाइट विद अशोक व्यास में आपका स्वागत है और आज हम बात करने वाले हैं चेंज की परिवर्तन कहा जाता है चेंज इज दी ओनली कॉन्स्टेंट इन लाइफ we keep changing things around us keep changing and many times we find that people who are constantly we connect with also changes are we consciously changing or it is happening unconsciously we will enter into that arena of consciousness uh, keeping our focus on change but we'll also talk about changes that uh, occur in our lives uh, as we adapt to new roles if there is a baby in the family if someone gets married if uh, there are some additional responsibilities or if there is someone who stayed with us was related to us and then they depart so there are different cycles of change that are inevitable in <coughs> our lives and today i have a wonderful uh, panel to talk about what to learn from change what we we can initiate that change which will bring us little nearer to the sense of satisfaction and fulfillment so let me begin uh, by welcoming uh, two gentlemen who represent a wonderful organization chinmaya mission new york uh, acharya arun gosai ji uh, welcome to our studio and kamal kapoor ji you are helping chinmaya mission new york as treasurer for many Hi. thanks for joining us and welcoming you i move towards myra godfrey she has founded an organization called geeta for the masses and uh, you are also offering a new book which will reach our uh, readers soon it is called vibrations healing so how vibrations heal will try and learn about that from her and i also have the pleasure of welcoming someone who you might have not seen but whose film you have uh, seen on youtube uh, it was made uh, just using google glass called seeds anish chaganti joining us from uh, California now Yeah Los Angeles Los Angeles yeah. so Ali all the way from Ali he's here for a couple of meetings because he's a budding filmmaker and he has established and made a mark with this small of <coughs> that we'll be sharing with you so why don't we begin by someone who has come all the way from uh, Ali so tell me Anisha uh, when you look at the change uh, as a filmmaker what it means to you as a storyteller Um well I think when I'm when I'm coming up with any sort of story uh change is sort of the most important part uh when you're writing stories people talk about a character's arc um and that what that means is if you look at any good story a character must like will always start off um usually at point A and throughout the story the the obstacles are uh he he has to like conquer these obstacles and and in doing so his character changes for example um you take any movie you go from selfish to uh you know selfless uh create or you know shy to to confident you have these arcs and that's in any story um really it comes down to the character and what what change uh happens there and the most the best movies in my opinion are the ones that have the the most dramatic change um and the most sort of radical <coughs> so yeah change is extremely important to storytelling uh whether it's really just the character themselves sometimes they don't change but the audience will feel like there was usually like twists and movies act like change um even when there isn't one uh, within a character you know uh for example i don't know if you've seen um like the usual suspects or something uh you know one of the characters doesn't really change but it like the twist at the end when you find out what's actually going on it feels like that to the audience but so change is like whether it's in the audience or in the character it's the most one of the most important elements of stories so change uh, in our understanding makes uh, the film interesting for us as well as uh, this change in our understanding makes life interesting and at times we find there are some people when we meet them they seem to have a new glow of 
fresh glow of newness, and we like that. But there are some people we don't like the change that we see in them, and we feel now it's he or she is so cold. Once they were warm, so there are different kind of changes uh, and a wide range of changes that we as human beings are capable of uh, embracing. Uh, referring to storytelling, filmmaking, characters, there are two types of uh, characters we sometimes uh, classify: some static and some growing characters. So. Static character would remain the same, it will have predictable quality and growing character would go as Anish mentioned from point A to point B. Now is growth conscious or it is inevitable? Let me request first uh, Kamalji uh, to share his thoughts on that. When I started my career in accounting, there were no personal computers, there were no fax machines, there were no cell phones. So technology has been the very, very fundamental change of the last 20 to 30 years. And if you look around yourself, change is everywhere. You cannot ignore change. Uh, every cell in our body is constantly changing. Uh, corporate America is changing. Consolidation is happening. Stock market is changing. Global economy is here. Uh, I mean, it's all around you. And, and, and you either embrace it. If you ignore it, you're going to be unhappy. So it has many dimensions to it, uh, many, many dimensions to it. Uh, so there are many dimensions, and uh, we just take a cue from that line where he says, uh, either you embrace it or you'll be unhappy, and whether all of us would agree with that as a universal statement or not is something uh, worth evaluating with the help of Myra. And uh, is it the individual who is creating the change for himself or herself, or it is always thrusted, thrusted upon you. So from the point of view of being a creative human being, uh, is, it, is it always advisable that you accept the change and walk with the time, or you create your own path? I think it's both. I think it depends really on how conscious an individual is, how strong they've cultivated their willpower or sankalpa. A lot of people, change is completely inevitable and change will be thrust upon you. Or more appropriately, it's perspective. Whether you feel that it's being thrust upon you or whether you feel that you've been a, a conscious co-creator in what's going on in life, any situations that happens is always dictated by something uh, that you've done in your past or that you're doing in your present. And what you do in your present will always determine what happens in the future. So no, you absolutely don't have to accept the things that are coming to you. If you want to become conscious and choose how your life goes, you have to exert a very strong influence through your will on the present moment to make change a flow with your consciousness, not so that consciousness in general is pulling you along with it. And you can choose either trajectory. You can choose to be drug along with the currents of change, or you can choose to be a creator in that and make consciousness flow to your will. But that takes a lot of work. Absolutely. So I just uh, find that interesting area or interesting space where uh, we are told by Myra that it takes a lot of work. And as human being, you are always uh, in the thick of action, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. So how to be the maker of your own destiny? If we dwell deeper into the message of Bhagavad Gita with the help of uh, Acharya Arun Gosai ji, what would you say, is it possible for man to be the creator of his own destiny or you just go with the flow? Absolutely right. First of all, Ashok Ji, let me say Namaskar to you and Namaskar to all our viewers. So when I go to the store, the one thing I look forward to Ashok Ji is my change. When I make a purchase, <laughs> I look forward to change. And if it's one secret to life, Ashokji, one must look forward to change in his life. Because even the Ganges, the most powerful river in the world, both spiritual and material, it changes constantly. That alone teaches us that change is a good thing. Us being here, living together, us sitting here, it's no coincidence. We must accept all situations with the same equal vision to better our lives in the future. So going back to destiny, 
all of us by our actions in the present moment we encounter something called a destiny for example if i study hard and i put all my efforts into getting an a in my class right by studying an a on the next exam is guaranteed if i do not study if i am lazy if i am lethargic how can the a come so destiny comes as a result of our current actions now and also when we meet that destiny when i get that a my free will comes into the picture because every moment is a new chance to do better so i met my destiny now i have to act on that that is called free will many a times people come to situations in their life they're puzzled they're bedazzled by the current moment but they must ask themselves what did they do in the past to influence this change whether good or bad in the current moment their mind must have been colored a certain way the quality of mind if they did a good thing was great the quality of thoughts if they did a good thing was single pointed the direction was there so they met a good destiny the person who is dejected in the past the person who didn't try his best who left it just on the wayside their current situation would not have been good but everyone has the current moment to act on free will what will i do now in my life to ensure a bright future for me what will i do now in my life to ensure a bright change in the world around me this is the question we must ask ashok ji so what are you going to do now uh stay with us <laughs> and as you stay with us i want to request anish to share a few details about the concept that resulted into uh, the film called seeds which we are going to share shortly yeah um seeds was sort of a a project that came up, uh came around through google glass um which is obviously a part of google uh, and they had this program called the creative collective that sort of gave the glass out to to film schools throughout the country and asked them to to produce material for them produce content for them and so that program was sort of around for 2 years and nothing had sort of come out of it so we decided um uh, why not tell a story that um address some of the concerns people had publicly with with the product um as well as tell a story that people would, that could stand on its own as well um and somehow along the other or the other um this idea came along uh, of why why can't i just go to india um to shoot this thing um and from that was actually the real uh seed of the idea no no pun intended i would have i swear i would have used that one. um but yeah so that's where the idea came and then i realized like why not uh what's what can i what story can i tell and i realized um, um some of the some of the problems uh people had with glass and from there the theme of the story came in and then from the theme of the story d- devised a, a narrative around it and this product came out so so we'll be sharing this product with you right after this short break but i just want to say this once upon a time we used to think that film making is a very mysterious uh, very cumbersome process and now it is just like this google class he used and created this wonderful film which some of you might have seen on youtube it went viral and some of you uh, may want to see it with us again so stay with us and we'll be sharing seeds right after this short break वेलकम बैक यू वॉचिंग इन साइड शो और आज हम बात कर रहे हैं परिवर्तन की चेंज ऑफ वेरियस काइंड दैट इज अ पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ आवर लाइफ एंड वी टॉक अबाउट द फिल्म विच अनीश हैज क्रिएटेड कॉल्ड सीड्स सो बिफोर वी शेयर दैट फिल्म लेट मी आस्क कमल जी टू शेयर विन एज अ चाइल्ड you observed for the first time that this tiny little seed has the potential uh, to give uh, such a huge tree what was was that fascinating as a child absolutely absolutely uh we i mean i i do spend a fair amount of my time gardening gardening uh i enjoy it and that's been my passion for the last many many years uh i work from home 
and I can squeeze in some free time on some sporadic basis here and there, and I can just jump into the garden throughout the day at any given moment. And I, we went away recently for a few days on a vacation, and I had put a number of pots, and the planted we flowers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And when you see them on a daily basis, you see very little growth. It doesn't seem that it's changing that much. When we came back after three or four days, it was astonishing to see how much growth had happened. <laughs> and, 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 and it just, just seeing nature flourish, it's just after a while it seems that we are communicating with the landscape. There is some, some intangible there. You know, you walk on grass, you water the plants. When they're dry, they're kind of low and they're not moving. And you put a little water and it comes up. Uh, you see life. You see the very life there, you know. Uh, the, the so blossoming of life is the most beautiful thing that uh, makes us happy, and it's inspiring also. And uh, like seed, each human being has uh, the seed of uh, his or her potential, but some of uh, us see that clearly at the right time. Some of us fail to realize our potentials now. Uh, with your um, experience of uh, conducting classes related to Gita, Gita for the masses, Mayra, what might help someone identify what they are made for? Uh, what is it that is lying in the form of the potential seed in them, mm -hmm. potential possible? There's many, many, many different ways to go about that. I actually discuss a lot of that in my book that will be released next February. Uh, Dharma is your life purpose, what it is that we're meant to do. Whenever a person is able to identify what their Dharma is, that is when, that's the only potential time when your full potential can manifest, when that seed can sprout and become a mighty plant or, or a tree or whatever it is that it's meant to become. There's so many, so many different ways to identify what your life purpose is. And we all go about it in a very different way because we all have different inclinations, different strengths, different weaknesses. So it's, uh, it's really about finding out who you are. From my perspective, all spiritual practices, everything that I teach, it's just take everything you think you know, throw it out the window, and take what is going to help you to come into yourself, what's going to help you to find your keys and your secrets, what's going to unlock your doorways to yourself. Because that's the only place where you're really going to find what is my destiny, what is my potential, what is really lying inside of me. But the best way is to find what makes you happy. You don't need to look any further than what brings you joy versus what doesn't. And don't ever ask the mind, because the mind always lies. Ask the heart. Ask that silent voice within. What do you feel in your depth? What truly makes you happy beyond all reason, beyond doubt, beyond thought, and pursue it madly. If you really want to find what your potential is and what you're capable of, pursue what it is in your heart that makes you happy. So pursue what it is in your heart, uh, so that means you have to learn to listen to your heart and uh, she says mine always lies, so some of you may not agree with it, but what uh, is the underlying message here is uh, what makes you happy, only you can find that out. But many times uh, there are some structured ways and methods uh, that are given to us which may also help us uh, do that, uh, go towards that discovery. And we hear so much uh, good thing about service, serving mankind. And Acharya uh, Arun Gosai ji is sitting with me. He probably, while studying his scriptures, was also uh, taught or inspired to go for service-oriented activities as a way to know about himself. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, you know, there's a very famous saying that I was taught by my Acharya in India. His name is Swami Advainandaji. And actually, I have two Acharyas, Advainandaji and Puja Sharadanandaji. And both of them told me this one bit of advice. They said, you cannot force a flower to bloom. But when that flower blooms finally, it's the most beautiful thing. So, as Mayraji said, all of us come into this awareness sometime in our life about what is that swadharma, that thing about us that makes us happy, and we can make the world happy in the process. 
To find this, however, the scriptures tell us that there are three pathways to this discovery of positive change in our life. It is the pathway of bhakti, karma, and jnan. So we have devotion, we have work, serving human beings, and the, uh, the pathway of knowledge. So by having bhakti, by putting your energies to a higher power more than yourself, you cultivate the change of quality of thought. So when the thoughts are of a pious nature, when there's peace in the mind, when there's no more agitations because you think about divinity, only peaceful, fruitful actions come. When you follow the path of karma yoga, when you serve a higher power much more than yourself, when you're in your company and you see a higher goal, a higher picture, and you really work together, the quality of thoughts remains single-pointed on that goal. And when you focus on jnan, when you're trying to find that pathway to God realization, who essentially we are, which is Brahman or the Supreme Reality, when you really focus on that, you change the direction of your thought to a higher level. So change according to the scriptures come inevitably, right? They're unavoidable. But what we have to do is change the quality of thought, the quantity of thought, and the direction of our thoughts to ensure perfect change in our life. Quality, quantity of thoughts and changes and all these ideas. So I'm just trying to see how Anish Chaganti, 23-year-old uh, young man, uh, focusing on making. What do you make out of uh, all these uh, ideas? Do you feel you find yourself relating to what he's saying? Or you feel this is uh, not the space that you are familiar with and your creativity uh, is not necessarily taking all these into account? No, I think, I think as, like a, as a person, I think this is all relevant information. I mean, one of the most... This is really random, but one of the most important pieces of advice my, my friend gave me, it, and it was really simple, and I didn't really get it at first. He said something's going to happen, and then he just ended it there. And I, I was like, oh, okay, how's that, how that a piece of advice? And then I thought about it more, and I realized, like, that's it. Like, the one thing that you can guarantee in life is that something's going to happen. And it's really, like, it's the, how you respond to it that um, I think affects a lot of the future. And really, I agree with everyone here. It's, it's yeah, I... There's a lot of things where it's it's you gotta as far as passion goes. I mean, that's totally how I try to live my life. Whether or not um, it was easy to convince anyone, especially my parents at first, you know, like uh, about following, you know, what 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 speaks to you the most. But yeah, no, I think it changes change is inevitable. I agree, and it's it's really how you respond to it and how open you and vulnerable you are. Um, I think vulnerability is, is definitely a concept that kind of leaks into creativity and personal life. Is if the more vulnerable you are, the more accepting of change you'll be. Um, as a director, things are always changing on set. Um, I think how you respond to that is gonna determine whether or not the, the end product is, is actually good or, or not, so. Vulnerability, uh, you want to elaborate slightly on that? On vulnerability? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a, as a creative person, I think the, the, best, the best work, the m work that I'm most proud of and the work that others are most proud of when they, when they do it is just honest work. And I think honesty is derived from vulnerability. Um, and by that, I mean just being open to an experience or a person or an encounter or really anything and, and sort of responding purely as you and not as not as I'm a I'm a stranger on a subway I shouldn't do that or I'm uh, I'm at like that's not social I, not it's just it's just being comfortable in who you are and responding just to your to yourself and your immediate reaction whatever that is assess it and sort of act on that rather than um like judging or basing your actions on some preconceived notion of what you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, so be honest to yourself and how honest uh, Anish has been in uh, making this film. Let's find out. Watch Seeds.
your dreams and uh, <coughs> you feel a little moist in your eyes when you watch this two and a half minute uh, film by Anish. Uh, so Anish, let me uh, request you to share this last scene, how it was conceived, which kind of connects with the emotional side of the viewer. How was the last scene shot or cons- just Con- thought of? Thought of. Okay. Um, well, it kind of goes back to the theme of, of glass that I was talking about earlier. Um, it started off with this idea that I, I asked a lot of people what people thought of, um, what they thought of glass. And the idea was a lot of people were like, okay, it's, it's really cold. It's, it, it's the future, but it's not a good future. It's, you know, it's a, this mechanical object on your face. And so immediately um, the theme of the story became accepting, like saying, yes, this, it is the future, but it doesn't forget the past as well. Um, and that sort of became the theme of the story, and that whole storyline was sort of conceived from that point of like, okay, the future is this kid, um, this is the baby, and uh, the past is his mother, and um, our main character is essentially the guy who delivers that information, which um, really comes down to, to what Google's all about, um, which is connecting information to people. Um, so yeah, that last scene, uh, it was conceived pretty much early in the begin- uh, right, right in the beginning, and then um, we had a wonderful actress um, play my mom, and so she, it's really funny, everyone asks me if that's my real mom. I mean, even we had uh, uh, a few magazines, like pretty big magazines, call up and talk about her as if she was my real mom, and I'll be like, no, 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 this is <laughs> all wrong. Uh, it's not, it's all fake, everything's fake, except the watch, that's real. Um, but yeah, no, it's, we, we thought of it early on, and I sort of carried uh, that envelope with me the whole trip. Uh, I made that trip uh, like I was the main character of the movie, and just put the glasses on, wore a wedding ring for two weeks, and, and went through India and shot that, so... That was like that was a full day shoot, uh, and my mom was on set actually uh, helping me with a lot of the staging. Um, she'd be like, "Okay, no, a mom wouldn't do that. A mom would do this," and she'd help with the food and whatnot. And uh, she was right on the sides when we shot that. So, yeah, wonderful. So uh, there is something more I want to ask Anish about this film, but before that, Myra, what was your immediate response to this creative piece by him? I think it was very beautiful, actually. I mean, it shows all of these spiritual principles and how they're actually lived. I mean, we we can talk about it in so many different ways, so many intellectual concepts. Uh, scripture say this. But when it comes to really living it in life, sometimes I found it, it's really important to just simplify the concepts down, just like you did uh, in that film, and and make it seem mundane so that people can relate to the concepts as if it is their own. Because if you can't live a spiritual concept, um, if you think it's too unattainable or too unapproachable, you won't even try. And spirituality is always, always, always meant to be lived. So what does it come down to? It comes down to finding your passion, finding what it is that you love, finding what it is that truly makes your heart sing. And from there, it's like you can go into deepening this understanding of yourself. You can deepen into everything. Once you find the secrets in yourself, you will understand everything and every scripture that you read. But if you don't understand yourself, it doesn't matter how much time you spend trying to study and in contemplation, it's not going to make sense to you. But the second you unlock your inner doors, everything will make sense. Even though we may talk about it in different language or different words or different concepts, it's all ultimately the same thing. So I think when you're able to see something that touches the heart like that, that's a universal language that everyone understands. Not everyone's going to understand when I talk about the Bhagavad Gita. Not everyone is going to understand um, if I pick up another scripture or if I'm reading something from the Tirukkural. No one's going to understand maybe what these little gems of wisdom mean. But when you make it very personal personal to people's life experience, uh, who's not going to understand that? So what I understand is uh, sometimes uh, some of us uh, feel a little uh, um, uncomfortable when there is a very thick dividing line between here materialism stops and here spirituality starts. Is it not that both uh, these are uh, one and the same? Uh, we'll talk about that and also there are different changes, some changes we are happy about, but look at it this way, if you got one million dollars, that is a change, uh, you feel happy about it. But if you <laughs> if you lost a million dollars, that is a change, but are you happy about it? So how do we accept uh, changes which uh, makes us happy, 
and those changes which makes us unhappy. We'll talk about that aspect right after this short break. Welcome back. You're watching Insight Radio the Show, Vyas, and we are talking about change. The time changes, and there are many changes uh, that we create, and some we receive, and we respectfully accept them. But there are some changes which we consider has played significant role in our lives, uh, as if the whole life has changed. Sometimes uh, this change is for good. So let's let's talk about the positive side of change for now, uh, pertaining to personal experience. If I request uh, Ach uh, Acharya Arun Gosai ji, uh, you grew up in Guyana, in New York City, yeah. in New York City, mm -hmm. and uh, at some point you decided that you want to pursue uh, sincere study of Vedanta. You went to India, so that was a big change. It was and, definitely and. <laughs> And was was uh, that a good change that you would say? Let me uh, sort of stretch a little bit. So, leaving aside this part, any change that you consider was uh, very significant in your life. Of positively. course. So, as you said, I was born in Guyana. So, at six months old, as soon as I was old enough to come on the plane to come to America, my parents, my my parent, my, my father's name is Sri Prakash Gosaiji, my mother is Leela Gosaiji, they put me on the plane to New York with them. So that was a big change. Of course I wasn't conscious of what happened, but the mere fact is it happened. As Anish says, something will happen. That is the nature of all change. <laughs> and his movie was brilliant, I'll tell you why. Because to go through so many changes in your life, you need two things. You need adaptability and you need humility. Adaptability allows you to function in any change of situation in any circumstance. Humility gives you the mindset that it takes to welcome these changes in your life. For me personally, I went to Stony Brook University. I studied accountancy and I worked three years as an accounting manager in New York City, in Soho. But success wasn't, was there. I was making, of course, money but fulfillment wasn't there. And there are two, there's a difference between the two. To be successful means having money, homes, all of these things, luxury all around you. But to be fulfilled is to be content in that change of happiness that came in your life. So even though the graduation came, even though I was making money, I still felt that something was missing from within. So I knew what my father did. My father was a great pracharak on the Ram Chaitamanas. His name is Sri Prakash Gosaiji, and, and uh, coincidentally, you've interviewed him before. And he made such a change in the world. And I know how fulfilled he was by doing that, by touching the lives of many. Because you know, sometimes in life, Ashokji, we become very selfish. Sometimes we do things with very selfish intentions. How am I going to benefit? How happy is this going to make me? But I tell you one thing: by living around my father, by being engaged in his work, I saw the happiness that came from him when he touched the life of another. So when I sat in my office one day, I thought to myself, I'm not getting any younger. The year will change, the times will change. I need to do something that will fulfill me, not just make me successful. So immediately I applied to the Sandeepni Sadhnalai in Bombay, India. Uh, it's the premier institute of Vedantic learning uh, uh, based out of the Chinmaya mission. And there I studied three year, two years of Vedantic study, which com comprised of Upanishadic study, which are the latter portion of the Vedas, which tell us the true essence of all beings, which is the one constant in all the change in, changes that happen in life. So things happen every, every moment. Things and beings change by nature. It is actually one of the traits, the hallmarks of Maya, that things change. Right? But there's one constant in all of that change. And that one constant, the sages and saints didn't know what to call it. Some called it Om, some called it Pranav, some called it Jesus, Allah, Krishna, Rama. But that change is constant. And it is the change that we go through, but the constant factor that allows us to see these changes, that factor in us that allows us to witness the change, is nothing but God himself. And it is that sort of study that I studied for two years in India. 
And of course, it was a life-changing stu study because I realized that just material things around me would never make me happy. I'm a millionaire today. I live in a big house today. But guess what? That can be taken away like that. Hurricane Sandy hit New York City just a couple of years ago. And many homes and lives were destroyed. Many people went into depression. A lot of people, they went into such depressions that they did drastic changes in their life that were for the negative. But when you understand that there is a greater portion of you that survives any death, any negative change, there is something that is positive throughout all of these negativities that is constant. When you realize that, you become fulfilled. Because it is the true source of happiness within you that we are looking for. Everyone, everyone wants to be permanently happy, isn't that true? No one wants temporary happiness. The million dollars, when it goes away, we become sorrowful. But the true happiness that resides within <clears throat> us, the self, is constantly ushering out happiness and fulfillment in our life. And when we can share that happiness with others, that's where we gain the fulfillment. So share that happiness with others and uh, there's a constant fulfillment and when you hear these words coming from Arun Gosainji, if you have not experienced what he's saying, you say, what, what, are, you talking, what are you talking about? But there was one reference where uh, many of us can relate to and uh, that was uh, as a successful accountant, he realized it is not leading to fulfillment and he created a change. It was a conscious decision to go and study Vedanta in India. So that kind of uh, stage uh, many of us encounter, <coughs> but few, very few have that courage to invite, invoke and create this kind of drastic change in their lives and what it takes to have that courage. And I'm sure Myra has also had her share of this inner journey, inner struggle, and if I use the word, a kind of restlessness. So when you're passing through that phase where you're trying to become clear and clearer about who you are, uh, sometimes even to invoke knowledge, you need some kind of courage. Would you agree there? Absolutely. And suffering is also a great purifier. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit of suffering with change because you don't know what to expect and the mind is always wanting to gravitate towards what it knows. It can't really know what the future holds. Again, the heart knows everything, but uh, it takes the mind a long time to silence itself until it can listen to the heart. I had such drastic <coughs> change happen in my life. Um, at the time when I met my guru, again, I wasn't fully uh, contented or fulfilled with my life. I used to be a molecular biologist. I so intently pursued my spirituality, his teachings. I listened to every discourse he had ever given. I had gotten my hands on everything I possibly could that he had ever publicly and non-publicly released to the point to where that single-pointed focus destroyed the rest of my life. I lost <coughs> everything in my life. I lost my health, I lost my job, I lost my marriage, I lost my home. Absolutely everything was destroyed. And that was what was necessary to lead to me coming to a place of greater fulfillment to figure out what is it that I really want? What is it that the spirituality means? Um, I've always been close to God since I was a child, but of course you're brought up in ways people tell you you need to go do this, you need to do this for a career. I was told uh, to pursue medicine. I decided not to do that after I had had my children. I decided to go into research instead. It still wasn't totally fulfilling to me. And so eventually you have to ask yourself those questions. You know, if you're discontented enough, you'll finally have to ask yourself what is going to make me happy and be willing to go through the process of change required to dissolve the things in your life that are not taking you towards what's ultimately going to lead you to that highest success. <coughs> so like when you were speaking about the changes you went through with going to, the, going to school to pursue your spirituality, that led you in the direction that uh, has brought you towards a greater fulfillment in your life. All of the changes that I have endured have definitely brought me to a place where I'm more greatly fulfilled as well. 
You know, I think it's this constant evolution. We're always changing, we're always growing, we're always aspiring to make a, a bigger and more meaningful change in the lives of others and also like in our own lives to make the biggest impact possible. So that's a matter of being able to acknowledge that too. Where are you in this moment? Is this is what you wanted two years ago the same as what you want now? Uh, are you actually working towards fulfilling your goals so that you can keep moving forward. Because unfulfilled goals, they don't just disappear. You know, you're going to either have to fulfill them or totally burn the seed of that karma and that desire so that you then can be single-pointed enough to pursue what it is that you want to pursue. But with will, anything is possible. You can do anything you want or need to in your life. So there are a couple of things. Uh, unfulfilled goals do not go away. They remain in the seed form. She also talked about uh, that... Uh, step by step journey of being becoming single pointed focused on if i say her pursuit for the truth uh, that led to uh, she used the word destroyed or maybe she was uh, in a situation where you moved away from family job etc I know I wouldn't say I moved away from it. I would say the intervention of Shakti and the Divine Mother was so intense that that Kali force literally ripped my life and my karmic world asunder. It destroyed everything within a matter of about a year. It was gone and I felt at that moment victimized and helpless. I felt like I was a victim of the circumstances of my life. But in reality, it was... Uh, it was my will, it was my aspiration. The sincerity of aspiration was taking away that which was no longer serving. And I did have the cognizance to realize that at the time, but it was still a very painful process to endure. So I wanted to go to Kamali and he is a householder and somehow I would see Arun Gosaiji and Maharaji somewhere uh, near that uh, side of renunciating or have renunciated or have committed uh, towards serving the divine or the society uh, with uh, these ideas. So, Kamali, when you hear uh, experiences of uh, people like uh, Arunji from a different side, and she grew up in America, of course, he also, but uh, so parents feel scared that if their kids start taking keen interest in spiritual studies, they would not be normal. Have you come across <laughs> that? Well, let me, take, uh, let me take the case of an adult like myself. Uh, my journey with the Chinmaya mission has been a very short one, five, six, seven years. And when I look back as to what I have learned, how far I have come along, how I begin in my own mind, how I challenge certain assumptions, uh, it's been a fascinating journey. It's been absolutely a fascinating journey. It's opened up a range of possibilities for me. I have never looked at life the way I look at it now. Sitting in the laps of these acharyas who have come forward and they give us their time and energy and effort in teaching us the scriptures and dissecting it for us, giving us the opportunity to ask questions, critically examine what they say. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just, I have so much to thank all these people for. Ours is a young center. Chenmaya Mission, New York, it's about six, seven years old. And I want to thank all these acharyas who have come forward. Acharya Arunji, most recently. Prior to that, we had uh, Brahmachari Krishnamurti Ji, who is no longer with us. He passed away last year. What a dedicated acharya he was. Uh, Swami Shantanan Ji from New Jersey. All these masters have come forward to educate us, how to embrace life, make us ask questions, critically examine you know, uh, what life is all about. Uh, I mean, the ultimate, the ultimate question is, what do you want from life? I mean, how do you, I mean. Let me, let me take your ultimate question, uh, and I, I would like you also to respond. But Anish, uh, looks like you are looking at life from that stage where you see, oh, here I come, life. <laughs> because when you are in that age, uh, early 20s or so, you see it, uh, I'm going to do it like that. So when he's saying, uh, whatever he's saying about life, how, how do you connect with it? 
and does it resonate with your way of thinking is there any uh, sort of introspection or your creative flow what would be um yeah i wouldn't i would i definitely wouldn't say that i have close to as much experience as you know anyone in this room is with anything you know i'm i'm just 23 years old but and I, my whole life i've sort of been or my adult life if I can do even call that, I guess now. But uh, I've just been focused on one thing. But I mean, e even then, I, I think this idea of there's so many things in there that I can relate to, and that obviously I can take away. But um, yeah, I, I haven't really begun this 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 spiritual journey like all everyone here has. You know, I, I feel, but but at the same time, I, that's not something I feel like I'm um, uh, like I don't know. That, that's not something I feel behind on or behind the curve. I just feel like right now I'm in a, at a place in my life where I'm just asking questions and I feel okay with that. just asking questions. And I, I, I wouldn't, I would say just being open, being vulnerable, like we were talking about, um, and will sort of hopefully lead to that some sense of uh, fulfillment later on. So or right now, at least. Right. Is. So I, th I think there is a sense of fulfillment when you create something and which is accepted uh, in such a way as your film uh, seats were yeah. accepted. So when it went viral, so many hits, whatever, yeah. and you started uh, observing it probably. Yeah. Share with us, uh, realizing that change, uh, what was the inner reaction? Um, I think it was just, conf it, it was nice after wor uh, working for so long to, to sort of get your, get confirmed that your creative instincts were on the right track. I think that was the biggest um, plus for this whole video was that after it came out, you spend so much, it, you know, the film industry, the creative industry is, is tough because you got really great people putting their heart and soul into projects that really never see the light of day. And for that to sort of more than see the light of day, but really to get praised in such a crazy manner that honestly just really my life made a 180 overnight, you know, from just being another USC grad or at any another filmmaking, uh, a filmmaker in LA, you know, and we've got a lot of them out there to, to being someone who people wanted to hear about or hear from. I think that was share, just a... Share the figure, uh, how many hits already? I, last time I checked was about a week ago. It was, I think, 2.5 million, somewhere around there. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it got to a million in 48 hours and that just... It was huge. I, I had so many. I had. I think on Facebook, I had like 300 friend requests on on the day it came out. I had no. I I had no idea what to do. You know, and I accepted them all. I thought it was awesome. And the next day, I had another 300, and we had all these mutual friends. And I click on them, and they're all the other guys that I didn't know. Uh, so that's when I just had to stop. But yeah, no, it's it's been it's been a really cool. Uh, it's been a whirlwind for sure. But um, I'm excited. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So uh, very quickly, I know each one of us is excited over something or the other. And last word from you, Kamalji. Uh, you were continuing with that thought. The to answer a question, a, a, a question emanating from a young guy like Anish. You know, I mean, what do I? These guys have been around and they are following spirituality. What do I do? You know, if if you life is going to kick you around at some point in your life. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you live long enough, life is definitely going to give you a kick. When that kick comes to you, what do you do? Are you prepared to handle it? How do you handle it? How do you examine it? What should be your action at that point? And the tools that Acharya is talking about, or the tools that Vedanta talks about, it gives you those vehicles, it gives so, you those... Uh, so just taking a cue from you, Kamalji, and if I rephrase what he's saying uh, in terms of... Uh, saying that life is going to give a kick, uh, meaning there are adverse circumstances and one simple definition of yoga is uh, your ability to smile in adverse circumstances is yoga. And I hope uh, Acharya Arun Gosaiji would agree with me on that and I thank uh, Kamalji as well as Arun Gosaiji, Myra Godfrey and uh, Anish for joining us all the way from Ali. And we really had a wonderful range of change in today's Insight Tonight with the show, guys. I'm sure you enjoyed it. And there are going to be many, many changes uh, in the programming lineup of ITV as well. Stay with us, and uh, I'll see you again in this program next Monday. This is the show, guys.